let there be peace and love among all beings of the universe. Let there be peace, let there be peace. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaskar, Namaskar. Welcome, welcome. Keep quiet. Don't be surprised because we have come from all parts of the world for satsang in Lucknow and I tell you keep quiet. <laughs> so to keep quiet is to apprise you of the fact that you are always quiet. And you have come here to know about this, that to keep quiet, peace and love <coughs> is your nature. And this is satsang. And for the <clears throat> last some days we are speaking about only to keep quiet and what is to keep quiet is not to fall back into the past. What's the use? Past is past. It sounds reasonable. Mm -hmm. Any objections? <laughs> <laughs> Graveyard. Mind is graveyard. You can't get anything from the past. It's gone. What's the use of recalling the past and trouble your life? And future too is past. Because even this instant when I started was future, passed through the present, entered into the past. So everything is past. What you touch, what you think, what you see, what you imagine, what you do is all past. So you are told, do not connect yourself with the past and don't have any hope for the future because that is yet to come. When it will come, we will see. No use what is going to happen tomorrow. No one knows and past cannot be recalled. And present is slowly moving to the past. So, it's wisdom not to cling to present even. Whatever you do is passing in the past. So, you are always living into the past. Therefore, how you can be happy? So, happiness is to transcend this past, present and future and that you have never been told. Therefore, don't touch time and space. This is the projection of your real nature. You have projected time, tell me if you have not. You have projected space. You have projected this universe and you have projected this sun and moon and stars. Is it not your projection? When you wake up, then only you see this universe and your friends and also when you dream, you see the same thing. 
what you are seeing in the waking state, so in the dream state. When you sleep, where is the time? Where is the space? Where are the relations? Not even the sun enters into your sleep. Maybe midday you may be sleeping. There is no world, no sun, no moon, no day, no night. Only you project. And who projects is what happens? The next waking state, the first instant of the next waking state, who is projecting all this? Your mind. What is mind? Thought. What is thought? I. What is I? Now, investigate. I'm speaking of quietness. Now, this is the raft that is going to ferry you across everything and reach you unto your own eternal abode that you have to see for yourself here and now, not in time. So if you do not think of time and space, then you will find yourself that you have been already, always free, where there have been no death and no birth and no samsara. And it's not difficult because it is already here. You have to make effort when you have to acquire something which is at a distance and win, which you have to win after some effort. No, no effort. Not even a mentation of a single thought. Here is not even present. You will surely be somewhere else. And that somewhere else has no name. Some call it consciousness and some call it enlightenment and some call it freedom. It has no name. Who has given this name? Don't deceive yourself again by any name. And then they form some kind of method, ways, sadhanas, practice. So don't have any concept of any method, any practice. Any method. There's no method and there's no way. Way is somewhere when you have to travel, somewhere else. Here and now, to stay here and now, what method that you need, what way, what effort. So it is called quietness. And when you don't stir a thought, don't make any effort, and then you are not in time. And this is called your own resting place. I don't give any name because I don't want to deceive you. Otherwise, you will follow me. You follow, make this method. Make this method. You just try and you will see there exists no one. You are all alone. Not even alone. Not even alone. Alone, you can say, when there have been a concept of two-ness, the other, 
and where is someone else, some other, it is falsehood. Where there is someone else, where there is some other, there is falsehood. Don't touch it, and falsehood is the nature of mind. Therefore, my dear friends, you have come here for satsang, and satsang means association with your own true nature. This is called satsang. Satsang is not going to someone and becoming a student of someone, calling him a teacher, and you become a student. A relationship. So you can't live without relationships in the world. He is my father, he is my husband, he is my brother. So social relationships. <laughs> now, again in the trap of spiritual relationships, he is my teacher, I am student. So I don't allow you, I don't advise to have any kind of relationship with anyone because you came alone from somewhere you don't know and you have to return alone. Who will go with you? Will your teacher go with you? Will your friends go with you? Let alone friends, anybody else. Will your body go with you? Will your mind go with you? All these things of this universe, gross, subtle, spiritual, who will follow you along? You will be all alone. Not even a concept of loneliness will go with you. You are all alone and you have been alone. Neither you have come from anywhere, nor you have to return anywhere. And this is the ultimate truth. You are not to win it by anything. You are here and now in that place. Why you make any conceptions about <coughs> anything? That why do you become anything? Give up all becomings. You will always become something, you see. I am so and so. And this and that is mine. So, don't touch this, don't touch that. Don't touch me and don't touch you. Then tell me what is the situation here and now, this instant. So says Kabir also. <coughs> Kabir also. In this very instant, if you seek yourself, you are free in this very instant. Half of this instant, half of the half of this instant, you are free. This says Kabir and some other saints also. So freedom is not to depend on any, any person, any concept, any thing. Right now, in this instant, don't relate yourself to any person, anything, any idea. Tell me, who are you? For one instant, it's a question of one instant, you don't lose anything. You may pick up anything after one instant, and Kabir says half instant, and half of the half instant. I don't think you are going to do anything, but the gain I can't imagine. The gain I cannot say what you are gaining from this quarter of the instant. So this is called satsang means you have not to do anything and you have not to undo anything. This is called satsang. If you come here and I tell you to do this thing, do that thing. 
give up this thing, give up that thing. Change your behaviors, change your habits. Am I a teacher? <laughs> no, stay as you are. Because you are not the body, you are not the mind, you are not the senses. What do you change when you sleep? What do you change? How you change? What you want? And what you have rejected during the sleep? And you are happy, isn't it? Where this happiness comes from? Because you have rejected everything and you don't lose anything. And you are happy to lose everything also. Even your near ones, when the night is coming, <clears throat> 2300 hours, you say good night. <laughs> Person next door to you, in the same room, you say, no, let me sleep. What is this leave that you are happy to leave your friends and dear ones and go alone? This is your nature. It's, nature is calling you. You identify with others, therefore you are in trouble. And this trouble has to continue because you have projected it. <clears throat> There is no ghost in the room, but the child says there is a ghost. Who can remove that ghost? Ghost is nobody. You have projected some kind from whom you are terrified. This becomes a ghost. This is a fear. So you have to remove your fear. It is your projection. So what you are advised to do is, don't touch any thought of the past, present, future. And you are quiet. Quietness, what I use, of course, just to speak to you, is not the word you just undress this word of quietness. When I speak the word, undress the word and see. Don't simply hear this word. You go to the root of this word. Where does it come from? Where is the fountain of this word? It will take you to the fountain and also quietness will disappear. <laughs>